Wow, here we are again. <clears throat> Psalm 96. We're getting there slowly but surely. In this psalm right here, the king is coming. One day, the king is coming back to this earth. And there, there are at least in this one psalm, there are 17 different ways of praising the Lord and giving him due for his command. And uh, every king is uh, honored, needs to be honored. And we need to give the king of heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ, his due. And uh, in 96 here, we notice that the repetition of the word sing, that is singing unto him, verses 1 and 2. And the word give, verses 7 and 8. And uh, then we see, and the word let, that's 11 and 12. So what are we seeing? That we, we sing, we give, and we let. Now look at this, 96, 1 and 2. The new song uh, is the anthem that will swell when the Lord Jesus returns to earth and begins his glorious reign. It will not only be a new song, but a universal one. Uh, as it uh, swells up or as it wells, all of the people from all over the earth will blend together their voices, and men will say, Bless the name. Bless the name uh, of the Lord. And that's each day they will tell someone to bless the name of the Lord. What what they'll do in the future, in uh, 3 and 6, as we should be doing now, we got to declare. What are we declaring from 3 and 6? Let's look at it. It says, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord. Bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen and the wonders among all the people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared of, of all gods. For all the gods of the nation are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord, O ye kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Fear before him all the earth. Say among the heathen, that the Lord reigneth, the world also shall be established, that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice before the Lord, for he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. Over here in 98 and verse 6, let's go back over there a minute. This is going forward in verse 6. Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me, he that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. Talking about God knowing all of his people. He knows every one of his people on this earth. Let's take a breakdown look at this psalm. What is this new song? This new song is to bless the name of the Lord. And it's going to be in that day that universal song. And when he talks about the, the wonders among all the people, the Lord is great, infinitely superior to all gods, all of the little false g-gods made of wood or stone and powerless. And he's the true God is Jehovah who made the heavens. And when he talks about the wood, he wasn't talking about the trees themselves. 
he was talking about the little G gods made from the wood. His uh, attributes are like uh, ins inseparable. Uh, the attributes of God are 100% different than the attributes of man. We have to have God in us to have the attributes of God. Once we say, Jesus, forgive me of my sin, come in my heart and save my soul, we get the attributes of God in us by studying His Word. And His Word comes out of heaven. Uh, so we get those. And the majesty, He said here, we saw it said, the majesty proceedeth Him. His majesty proceedeth Him. When the heavens open up, and he appears, I guarantee you, everybody will pay attention. I, he's already come one time. His victory was shown then as he came. And then he went, and on the third day, he went to heaven. And on the third day he arose, he came back from heaven. And the victory over the grave, he told, uh, see, who did he tell? That there will be no sign. He told the scribes and Pharisees. He said there will be no sign except the sign of Jonah. That the Son of Man will be three days and nights in the heart of the earth. And he will return. And he will uh, be over the nations. And we have seen a faithful fulfillment of Jesus Christ being over the nations. Even the nation of Israel even though the majority of Israel has rejected Jesus as God in the flesh and as the Son of God. When Jesus came the first time, uh, he, has, he helped his, his servant Israel in the remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers. Luke 1 and 54 and 55. I'm going to go to the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. I'm going to go over there. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And we're going to Luke chapter 4. We're going to go to Luke chapter uh, 1 and verse 54. First, we're going to 1 and 54. And let's see what we're looking at right here. And we studied this just a bit ago. And sometimes I study too much and I get some things crossed in here and but we're coming back to it he hath holden his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy now Israel rejected him at the cross and but he remembered them as his people still he didn't reject them they rejected him but he did not reject them and now we're going to look uh, at another place in Luke in a minute, right here, he has remembered his mercy and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of God. It was the mercy of the Lord that prompted him to make the promises to Israel. And it is his faithfulness that now fulfills them. And uh, the, the, in this verse 6, 98, in, in 90, Psalm 98 and, and verse 6, we're going to look at that. At the first glance, it appears that all the Gentile world is being called to rejoice with Israel in verses 4 and 6. But the earth in verses 4 probably means the land of Israel as in uh, another translation. But 66, the saved Israelites are exhorted to break forth in the raptured song. And that's the uh, Levites are encouraged to join with the accompaniment of the heart. And in verse 6, the priests complete the harmony with their trumpets and the sound of the horn. In that day, the trumpets and the sound of the horn were triggers they triggered things. The sound of the horn or the blast of the horn usually triggered the be either the very beginning of something or the very end of it, but not normally 
in the middle. And so in 7 through 9, we just read uh, in 98, 7 through 9. Let's go back over there a minute. Let me get back on the page I'm supposed to be on. 7 through 9. He spoke unto them in the cloud and the pillar. And they kept his testimonies and the ordinance that he gave them. And so we see that in Psalm 99. By keeping the ordinance, they sounded the trumpet. They did what God told them to do. And he honored that because they did it. And so that was the, the part of it that we, we needed to see right there. Now let's get back over into 96 where we're supposed to be. So 96, 7 through 9. If we really appreciate the greatness and the goodness of the Lord, we will want others to magnify his name too. Thus, the psalmist calls on families of the peoples to join in telling the Lord how majestic and how stately and how mighty he is. Thy, they should subscribe him as the glory that is due his name. Bring in an offering. We do that. We come to church. Uh, in America here on Sunday, we go to church. And we bring an offering, one-tenth of whatever the Lord allowed us to make that week. And that offering is what we bring to God that he, he told us to bring, and we're doing it in obedience. And that obedience is recognized as doing what we're supposed to do. And we bring that to the church, and here in the sign it says, lay at his feet. So we lay it at his feet. And that's worshiping him. Uh, in the beauty of holiness, he says here, or the holy garment, that's all the world should pay him obedience. He said to bring on the first day of the week into the storehouse the tithes and offerings, and we are to do that. And then we are to recognize these signs as worshiping things. 96 and 10 is this. Uh, this verse identifies the occasion of the new song as the um, the king, as he comes, the Messiah and the king, the Lord, has begun his reign. The world system is established on a sound basis so that it shall not be moved. By wars, by depression, by poverty, by injustice, by catastrophes, or other crises. <coughs> this is a very good sign for us to be reading. It shall not be moved in the hour that we're in right here in the world today. The hour that we're in right now in the world we're in today, it shall not be moved. And we, we need to understand that God is always on the scene, and he's on the scene. Never during the thousand-year reign of Christ will we, we know that the end of the time, the heavens and the earth, will be destroyed by fire. Uh, uh, 2 Peter 3, 7 through 12 tells us that we won't know. He is the one that knows. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, uh, Romans, Matthew, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, Hebrews. I've got to find Peter here. My thumbs, uh, my thumbs aren't doing too good. Okay, I want to go to Second uh, Peter three and seven through twelve. Second Peter three, seven through twelve. As we study, as we study and we go through. We're going to, we, we go, sometimes I go from Genesis to Revelation when I'm studying a subject. And the subject matter shows you that the Bible is in unity. Here I'm going from, I'm going from over in the Psalms over to Second Peter to tie up some gospel facts. And they tie up here. And now we're going to look three through seven. We're going to read it. Second Peter, uh, 
uh, chapter 3, 7 through 12, excuse me. Okay. It said, But the heavens and the earth, which I now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved under fire against the day of judgment and the perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, or us would toward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. How is he going to come as a thief in the night? We don't know what's going to lead up to his coming just before he comes. The Bible said, look, watch the signs of the times. You might be seeing something that you haven't related yet, and you may need to. In the watching the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought ye to be in a holy conversation and godliness? We don't know what time Jesus is going to come on the scene. I can tell you this. When you draw your last breath, Jesus has come on the scene for you. When I draw my last breath, Jesus has come on the scene for me. And I will instantly be one place or the other. I will be in heaven with him instantly. Or I will be in hellfire and damnation forever. So before I draw my last breath, I have to make my peace with the Lord. I made my peace November 5th, 1972, when I said, God, forgive me. I'm a sinner. Come in my heart and save my soul. Have you made that peace yet? Do you know that if you should be hit right this second with a heart attack, that the next thing you're going to see is Jesus saying, Welcome home, my faithful servant? Or are you going to see the devil saying, Cast him into that deepest part of the fire down there. Which one are you going to meet when you leave here? He said in verse 8 of Psalm 99, I will early destroy all the wicked of the land, and I may cut off all wicked doers from the city of the Lord. That's the next sign we're going into. But the, I was going to read you the end before the beginning. I'm going to go back in a few minutes and put the beginning of that psalm on. But he's saying, if you're not in, you're out. If you're not in, you're out. And if you're out, you're out. It's just like playing baseball. Three strikes and you're out. You may have been off it three times salvation lately and you turned it down if you turn it down that time when your body dies and you haven't accepted him you will spend eternity in hellfire forever well our time has come and gone for this one and we will see you next time right bye bye